who do not understand the relation or have no idea about the relation or very brief ideas, I just want to shed some light on the Saudi-Iran relations during the Shah period. It's very important. During the Shah period, we had ups and downs with the relation between Saudi Arabia and Iran and with neighboring countries, which is very normal. All neighbors usually have this dispute here and there, which is in the political uh, environment, geopolitics, it's very normal. And it's healthy sometimes and understand to work together, to communicate, and then to solve problems, and then move forward. During the Shah, as I said, we had lots of problems. The Saudi-Iran relation uh, was cut in, in, in from 1944 to 1947, for three years. And then there was a very good move from the Iranian side, and they managed to solve our problems and move forward. All the problems during the Shah period, this is the difference, were kept in the political canals. Nothing else. If there is a problem, we can discuss it between, as from political point of view, to solve problem, to try to understand the points, and then if we agree, and mostly agreed, we can move forward and uh, have a better relation. And this is what happened during, especially from 1952. And we have lots of problems, Bahrain issue, the three islands of, of Emirates, uh, and many others, actually. The, the oil, what happened in 1973, when Saudi Arabia cut the export of the oil to some Western countries, Iran refused to, to, to stop exporting the oil, but it was fine, because their own interest. After the revolution, directly after the revolution, uh, when the revolution happened in Iran, the Saudi position was very, very positive. It was the Arab summit in Algeria, if I'm not mistaken, and King Khalid, the king of Saudi Arabia at that time, was asked by the media, what do you think of what's going on inside Iran? He said, this is the Iranian people's choice. I respect the Iranian people's choice, and I will work with whoever comes as a political system in Iran. So this is their own internal issues. And he was optimistic more because of the, the idea was to promote uh, Islamic unity among Muslim countries and as a republic, Islamic Republic of Iran. And because of the, the speeches was uh, delivered by uh, Khomeini, Ruhollah Khomeini, the founder of the Islamic Republic of Iran. But it wasn't that late, actually, until uh, people started thinking again about the relation because of what happened in the Hajj uh, and because of the, what they called, uh, you have to work with your, and collaborate with your neighbors in order to coexist with each other. We could, uh, have a good relation with different countries. So with Iran, we have lots of ties and values, shared values. We have Islamic, Islam first, this is the large umbrella. We have historical, cultural, uh, uh, economic as well relations with Iran. So this is very important to emphasize. So we have to regardless the nature of the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Iran right now. We have no choice, both sides. We have no choice but to solve problems and work together, but to be very open to discuss issues. And it's very important to build trust between the two sides. This is very important. Just to give an I more ideas, after Khatami period, we had more difficulties during Khatami, during Ahmed, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad period. But there was some move from the Saudi and the Arab side, GCC country side. In 2007, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the, the Iranian president of that time, was invited to attend, and for the first time, to attend the GCC summit in Doha. That was in 2007. 
And they try to work together to improve the relation, to have a very open discussion. The GCC suggested to the Iranian side, let's sign a kind of agreement for very general. Any country with other neighboring can do that to respect international norms and, uh, norms and laws, to not interfere in the other country's internal affairs, to not emphasize on sectarian issues, and just have a better relation, political relations, whatsoever we should not interfere in. Whether Sunni, whether Shia, forget about that, because Iran has been a Shia since 1501, for more than 500 years. We could coexist, we could work together with them, we could coexist and work with non-Muslims, leave alone Muslims. We share more values than the differences. So that is the sectarian issue, is not an issue when we are talking about political relations. So this is very important to emphasize. So unfortunately, the Iranian side refused to sign the agreement. And they came, they said, okay, that's fine, but we can suggest something different, and then we come to that point. We said, no, or, or this GCC side said, no, this to start with, this is international laws and norms we should respect. And then the Iranian side refused, unfortunately, to do that. And then we came to the what's so-called Arab Spring in 2011. It's another phase in the relation between the two sides. During the 2011 uh, Arab Spring, what's so called, uh, Khamenei, the supreme leader, came to Tehran Mosque on Friday and addressed people not inside Iran, but Arab, Arab, Arab nations in Arabic, and encouraged them to revolt against their own governments. That is recorded, and you can find it in the speech, whole speech. It's available online. Uh, he was encouraging them, and he said this is another phase of what they call it the Islamic awakening, which is they call the Islamic, uh, what happened in Iran in 1979. But when it came to Syria, it became different. Then they started talking about the hegemonic regimes, the American, the Israelis, they are targeting the Islamic country Syria because of a triangle of resistance, whatever. Uh, so that is an issue. It's very important. And I will give you just a, a very short example on that. In 2008, there was a, a research center in America called Zogby for research services. They do lots of polls and investigation and surveys. In 2008, they did a survey about the image of Iran in the Arabic countries, 2008. It is after 2006, 33 days of the war between Lebanon and Hezbollah and Israel. People were, people were very, you know, emotional maybe. So they were asked, 85% of the Arabs who were asked in different Arab countries, including GCC countries, looked positively towards Iran and Hezbollah. And then, in 2012, the same organization, they did the same survey in the same countries, and they came exactly the same result, but the other way around. 85% of the Arabs looked negatively toward Iran, while 15% only looked positively toward Iran. So that says a lot. So the Syrian issue is a turning point again in the relation between the two countries, or, or the two parts of the Arabian Gulf. And then Rouhani came in 2013. It's very important. Please tell me when you have time. Yeah, OK. Rouhani, he came with very good slogans to improve the relation between Iran and neighboring countries, especially Saudi Arabia, during his campaign, even before he was elected. And people were optimistic. 
but with countries because they had different experience and because what's going on in the region, not between the two countries. But again, people tend to uh, uh, really pessimistic again because of the, the approach the, uh, the new president taking. I cannot blame Rouhani for that, for one reason actually. Because two files are in, not in the hand of the president of Iran. We have to know this capacity. National security and foreign policy. These two files are in the hand of Khamenei himself. 